Hi, and welcome back to my channel. So you saw from our previous video that an ETF is a party mix of securities. So all right, you're at the grocery store now and you're in the confectionery aisle. You're looking at all these options. What else do you need to know before choosing the right ETF for you? Well, that's what we're gonna go through today. My name is Noor and I'm an ETF portfolio manager. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe along as I guide you through your financial literacy and investing journey and teach you everything you need to know about ETFs. So let's jump right into it. Today's video is gonna be more of a quick fire style where I just go through the key components and explain what you need to know about ETFs. Investment objective. So do you know the exposure that the ETF is aiming to provide and how it does that? Index. So most ETFs are index funds. They track the index and aim to replicate the performance of the index less any management fees and costs. There are also other types of managed funds and active funds, but that deserves a whole nother video for itself later. Ticker. It's a unique code used to identify the ETF on the securities exchange and by your brokerage platform. So it's usually three to four alphanumerical letters and, it can, and it's the same system used to identify stocks as well. So for example, the common stock that we know about is a Commonwealth Bank and that ticker is CBA. So for an ETF, an example is the Beta Shares Australia 200 Fund and that ticker is A200. AUM, it stands for Assets Under Management and it essentially is how big the fund is. So for example, if a fund has an AUM of $2 billion, it means there's $2 billion worth of investors' funds invested into the underlying assets within the ETF. So management fee, that is the fee payable to the manager of the fund who is taking care of it and running the fund. So the management fee is usually quoted on an annual basis. It's usually expressed as a percentage and you can find it on the fund issuer's website. So as an example, if a fund charges seven basis points or 0.07% for a management fee, it means that for every $1,000 invested, the fee for managing that is $7. So the management fee varies between funds and it's set depending on the type of fund and the amount of work that is needed to manage it. So usually the more straightforward ones, so the more well-known ones that try to replicate a broad diversified index, they tend to be cheaper compared to let's say your ESG or thematic type funds. It might come to you as a surprise, but there's actually a lot of work that needs to happen in the back end before you even start an ETF and then the ongoing management of it. So some things include the index licensing fee or your custodian costs or the admin costs associated with it. And on the topic of running the ETFs, you have the ETF issuer. That's the responsible entity or the one managing the fund. So in Australia, the, some of the ETF issues that we have include Vanguard, BlackRock, LeaderShares, and GlobalX, just to name a few. NAV stands for Net Asset Value, or it's commonly also referred to as just value per share. So it's calculated by taking the value of all the underlying securities held within the ETF, less any liabilities, and divided by the total number of shares outstanding. So it's basically like a fair value of one single unit of the fund, and it's usually what you see on the fund's website. Holdings. So this is what the ETF actually holds, or the underlying securities within the fund. So most ETFs publish their top holdings as well as their full holdings on their website, and it's updated regularly. A tip for you is to always look under the hood. So when you're deciding what ETF or whether you should invest in a certain ETF, it's very important to go on the fund's website, check out the holdings to make sure that its exposure or what it holds is actually aligned with what you expect it to. Going back to the investment objective. Distribution. So that is a share of income that an investor receives. You can think of it like the dividend of the fund. So funds can pay distributions either monthly, quarterly, semi-annual or annually. Don't worry, I get lots of questions about distribution, so I'll make sure to cover it in much more detail in videos to come. Index methodology. So how I like to think about it is the recipe behind how the ETF was created. So usually it's quite a long document to read, but it lays out all the rules behind what and how the securities are selected, how the fund is managed day to day, as well as how it's rebalanced. So it's, it's a really important document and you should definitely check it out. And a bonus one for you, so most ETFs are open-ended funds. So it means in theory, the fund can have an unlimited number of shares. So open-ended funds or ETFs are usually priced daily according to their NAV or net asset value. 
and there's no maturity date. So theoretically, you can hold it for as long as you like, as long as the ETF issuer is still around. So I've just thrown a whole bunch of terms at you. So let's put that all together now with an example. So we have the Vanguard Australian Shares Index ETF. So that is the ETF fund name. The ETF issuer is Vanguard and the ticker for this one is VAS, V-A-S. So the investment objective or the fund overview is to provide low cost, broadly diversified exposure to Australian companies and property trusts listed on the Australian Securities Exchange. And it does that by tracking the S&P slash ASX 300 index before any management fees and costs. So the index that this ETF has aims to track is the S&P slash ASX 300 index. And that tracks the largest 300 companies listed on the ASX. Now the AUM of the ETF is $12.47 billion. The latest official map that they have on the website as of end of May on the 16th of February is $91.55 rounded. You can also see below that there is something called an estimated intraday nav or shorthand is INAV. So that also stands for indicative nav and that is just an indicative bear value of the fund based on real-time prices. Management fee for this one is 0.1% or 10 basis points. These are the fund's top holdings as shown on the website and when you compare this to the list of the index top holdings you can see that they're the same. Okay, so hopefully now when you're on the ETF's website and you're navigating the page, you're going to be like, oh, I know what the main terms are, what it means. And while you're there, make sure you check out the PDS or the product disclosure statement. I know it's another long, boring document, but make sure you check it out. There's so much good stuff in there. Uh, it'll tell you more about the fund and also give you more information about the risk profile to help you determine whether it's suitable for you or not. So make sure to check it out. And that's it for today. So thank you again for watching this video. Let me know in the comments if there's any questions or any other terms that you want me to go through in more detail. Remember to like and subscribe. And you can also find me on other social media channels such as Instagram and TikTok under the handle The Long Way.